Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5 color sliver stack featuring none other than the first sliver as our commander, a 5 mana 7-7 seven, seven with Cascade, meaning when we cast it we exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non-land card that costs less, and then we get to cast that card without paying its mana cost. So this is a cast trigger, meaning that even if the first sliver gets countered, we still get to resolve the Cascade trigger and play that card for free. And then once it's in play, it will be a 7-7, seven, seven, saying sliver spells we cast have Cascade. So that can quickly get out of hand because of the potential chain reaction that happens when you cast a sliver. Because if you Cascade into another sliver, if we cast it for free, it still counts as casting that card. So if we Cascade into another sliver or changeling, we get to keep Cascading into more and more cards until we eventually reach one mana. Then taking a look at the rest of our deck, of course we're going to have almost every single sliver that's available on Arena, plus a couple shapeshifters with changeling that have every creature type, so they also pick up the bonuses from our slivers, which of course, as you all know, share their abilities with other slivers we control. In the case of striking sliver at one mana, that is first strike. At two mana we've got enduring sliver, giving out last for two mana, so we can pay two mana, tap our creature and put a plus one plus one counter on it at sorcery speed. Imposter is just a 3-1 with Changeling that plays well with First Strike, Sentinel Sliver for Vigilance, Diffusion Sliver gives us a bit of protection, Dragscape Sliver gives us Unearth for 2 mana so we can return our creatures from the graveyard with haste until end of turn, Leeching Sliver lets us drain the opponent whenever a creature attacks, Bladeback Sliver lets us ping the opponent if we're empty handed, Guardian Gladewalker just another Changeling that can put a plus one plus one counter on one of our creatures, Mana Weft Sliver is one of the better ones at 2 mana, letting our creatures tap to add 1 mana of any color, so great for ramping into our first sliver. Mast Vandal, another changeling that can deal with opposing artifacts and enchantments if we have a creature in our graveyard to exile. Paradise Druid, one of the few non-changeling, non-sliver creatures in the deck, just helps us ramp into the first sliver and fix our mana. And the same goes with Ornithopter of Paradise, which doesn't have Hexproof when untapped, but is a bit easier to cast and doesn't require green mana, so we don't need to worry about having the right lands in play. Then we've got Predatory Sliver, giving our creatures plus one plus one. Cloud Shredder Sliver, another great one, giving haste and flying. And then Metallic Mimic doesn't count as a changeling, so it doesn't trigger the first sliver when casting it, but it is still quite good as it will enter the battlefield and then count as a sliver, in addition to giving our slivers plus one plus one counters when they enter the battlefield. Then at three mana we've got a Lancer Sliver, once again giving first strike, Steel Form Sliver for an extra point of toughness, Glass Bull Mimic will enter the battlefield and copy one of our creatures, so once again doesn't trigger the first sliver, but copying one of our slivers that gives additional power and toughness for instance is still quite good. Then Belligerent Sliver gives a menace, Blur Sliver for haste once again, which is one of the better keywords, Hollow Head Sliver lets our slivers loot so we can tap to discard a card and draw. Then Spiteful Sliver says whenever a creature is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player or planeswalker. We've got Realmwalker as a changeling, providing card advantage by letting us play slivers off the top of our deck. Tempered Sliver says when a creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on it. Lava Belly Sliver says when this creature enters a battlefield, it deals one damage to target player or planeswalker, and we gain one life. Then Faber Elder, another one of these mana creatures that has Vigilance, gets plus one plus one for each color among permanents we control, so by default it's a 2-2, and then can tap, and for each color among permanents we control we add one mana of that color, so by itself it makes two mana, but with the first sliver in play it turns into a 5-5 with Vigilance that can attack, and then second main still tap to make five mana, which is quite powerful. Then Bloodline Pretender is a changeling that picks up a plus one plus one counter whenever a sliver enters a battlefield under our control. And Faceless Agent, another changeling that when it enters a battlefield lets us seek another sliver. Then moving up the curve at four mana, Bone Scythe Sliver gives a double strike. We've got Irregular Cohort, just another changeling that will make another 2 2 changeling token. We've got the Grave Shifter, a changeling that lets us return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand, so basically a Grave Digger that also happens to be a changeling, and Cleaving Sliver giving two additional power. 
And then topping off our curve here, first Sliver's Chosen, giving our Slivers Exalted, meaning whenever a creature we control attacks alone, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each instance of Exalted among permanents we control. Then looking at our non-creature spells, we've got a bit of early interaction with Swords to Plowshares and Lightning Bolt, as well as a few discard spells with Thoughtseize and Duress, which we can cascade into and then potentially take away a Sweeper from the opponent's hand, which can be quite effective against our strategy. Then at 2 mana, Rally the Ranks, another Anthem, giving our Slivers plus 1 plus 1. Heartless Act for more spot removal, Explore for a bit of Ramp, Despark and Lightning Helix for more spot removal, and then a few more 2 mana Ramp artifacts, with Arcane Signet being the best one, Cold Steel Heart enters battlefield tapped and we need to name a color, and then Pillar of Origins only makes mana for our Slivers. Then at 3 mana, a little bit more Ramp and Fixing with Cultivate, with one basic to search up in each color, the Bears of Lejara makes a Changeling token and can grow our Changelings up to 4-4s. Four We've got Chromatic Lantern for more ramp and fixing. Herald's Horn discounts our slivers and can find them off the top of our deck. And Icon of Ancestry gives them plus one plus one and we can activate it to look at the top three cards and potentially find another sliver. Then at four mana, Guardian Project also provides a bit of card advantage. Crippling Fear could be a one-sided board wipe. Distant Melody can draw cards for each sliver we control. Reflections of Lejara will copy all the slivers we cast in the form of a creature token. Mirari's Wake gives our creatures plus one plus one and doubles the mana our lands produce, which is helpful for recasting the first sliver if it has gotten answered a few times. Then Vanquisher's Banner gives plus one plus one, as well as letting us draw a card whenever we cast a sliver. And then last but not least, the Immortal Sun, very helpful against opposing Planeswalkers, since we're not playing any ourselves, giving us plus one plus one once again, discounting our creatures and letting us draw an extra card each turn. And then Haunting Voyage can potentially return all slivers from our graveyard if we foretold it. And then a mana base, one of each basic land to search up with Cultivate, as well as some of our fetch lands. And then we've got one of each pathway, as well as one of each shock land in the mana base. Then we've got one of each Triome as well, which is important in a 5-color mana base, as well as a few of these 5-color lands, including the World Tree, which can fix our mana if we get 6 lands in play. And fun fact, we can even use the activated ability, because all our changelings in the deck also count as gods, so we can search up all our changelings with the ability if we get to 10 mana. And then we've got Command Tower, of course, Evolving Wilds, a couple of these fetch lands to search up our basic lands as well as Forsaken Crossroads from the new Alchemy set, and Sliverhive, also a nice one that fixes our mana and gives us a late game mana sink making 1-1 one -one Sliver tokens that will pick up all those abilities, and then Unclaimed Territory in naming Sliver. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against a Kalein treasure deck. Hands pretty bad here, only two lands, no ramp. Not the right colors. This is a little bit better. Not perfect, still no early ramp, but we can cast most of our spells at least. And then definitely play this on black, and then I can kind of postpone my decision on River Glide Pathway. Could also play this tapped. Now this can be on blue. How much do I want to play Rally the Ranks on turn two? I guess I might be better off playing the Triumph now and then being guaranteed a Herald's Horn or Faceless Agent on three. I guess Horn on three lets me go Agent plus Rally on four, which is pretty efficient. Explore I cannot quite cast, so green is the last color we're missing here. So, yeah, I guess we'll go with the horn. And name Sliver. Doesn't ramp into our five color first Sliver, but still quite useful in general. So, our opponent's not doing a whole lot, maybe holding a lot of removal. Skullboard Merchant makes another treasure. And find a stomping ground, which is not a sliver, but it is the mana we need to cast our first sliver next turn. So I can either explore or play a rally the ranks. Um, I guess we don't need to explore necessarily. 
So I guess I also don't need to shock myself just yet. Go with Faceless Agent first in case I find another sliver I might want to cast. Maybe should have started there in case I find a green sliver I need to cast. All right, Leeching Sliver we can cast for one mana. So I guess we'll rally and then Leeching Sliver will be a way to potentially trigger Cascade as well. So despite the discount from Herald Sworn, of course, still counts as a two-mana creature for Cascade purposes, so we can Cascade into a one-drop. Terror of the Peaks, quite scary. Don't have an answer to it at the moment. And Unclaimed Territory will save me a little bit of damage. Alright, hit Lightning Bolts, which is not quite enough to kill a Terror of the Peaks. So probably go after Kalein. And pass it back. Sort of expecting the first sliver to get answered. Could also decide to let it go to the graveyard to get back with Grave Shifter so we don't have to pay the commander tax. Take five. And a Liliana can minus to kill both creatures, but at least Terror of the Peaks is gone. So command zone or no command zone. Next round I'm probably playing Immortal Sun, which also sort of deals with Liliana. And then, yeah, it's only going to be six mana to cast the first sliver, so for now probably still command zone. And hope they cannot answer Immortal Sun. Alright, we finally found a sliver. But it's gonna be Immortal Sun here. Now they might have ways to deal with artifacts. Although they might have used those on Herald's Horn in the meantime. The passive from Liliana still works, so opponent can still draw extra cards. Alright, so opponent goes Zorn to double their treasure outputs, and then Kalein makes two treasures. That's still manageable. And a Valky can have a look and take away one of my creatures. Graveshifter only costing two mana is quite nice here. So that's probably going to be the target, otherwise we can cast a one mana Faceless Agent. Harold's Horn finds Cultivates. Get to draw an extra card. And we can replay the first sliver here. The discount from Harold's Horn also applies, so it's actually only five mana. And then afterwards, probably want to play Diffusion Sliver. So if I can keep the blue mana available, that's probably for the best. So we've got green and red. Cascade into Spiteful. And let's see what one drop we get. Source to Plowshares, Exiles Valky. Doesn't even trigger Liliana. Get our Grave Shifter back. Murder Strider going after her first sliver still. Opponent has to pay the extra mana, and then probably still go for command zone here. Seven mana still quite reasonable. And a thirst. They might have wanted to change the ordering on those. 
Harold Sorn sees Chromatic Lantern. So no land means I cannot replay the first sliver. So instead, kind of liking Explore to develop my mana. Get probably, let's see, don't have much green and could maybe use an extra black. Play Chromatic Lantern and then Vanquisher's Banner. Naming Sliver. And then we're setting up for next turn, basically. Could attack Liliana, don't want to let them draw extra cards, so I'm just gonna hang back. So our artifact's about to take over. Paladins, not bad, but yeah, our opponent has seen enough here. Next turn, cast first Sliver, get to trigger Cascade, draw more cards of Banner, and potentially cast a couple more two drops here. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're facing the mirror match. And back in the day, the mirror match of Slivers was quite funny because Slivers would grant their abilities to all Slivers in play, including the opponents. Nowadays, it's not the case anymore. This hand's pretty bad. We're really just looking to find a lot of early ramp. This could do. We've got a Cold Steel Heart. Still need a couple lands, but probably not going to do much better on six. Alrighty, so probably still want the Scry here. And then what do we name? Probably green. And a swamp on top is perfect. So next turn, Cold Steel Heart, naming white. And we're on our way to casting the first sliver on turn four. Can play a Faber Elder next turn. Hive Stirrings making two 1 1 slivers, one of the cards I ended up cutting in the end. And I have to decide between blue or red. I think red is a little bit more prevalent overall. So we actually still need a little bit of fixing of the top here. Because I'm not going to have the blue mana to cast first sliver. Song of Freilis is pretty good with those 1 1 tokens, but we can potentially Crippling Fear if we find another black. Lining Helix deals with Elder. So black mana is acceptable, blue mana is acceptable. Ooh, rip apart my Cold Steel Heart. It's not ideal. But uh, I guess Masked Vandal can deal with Song of Freilis here. And then Triome lets me cast Crippling Fear to deal with the tokens. Alright, and even found blue mana, so could go for the first sliver now. And then wait on Crippling Fear, that's fine. Get a Leeching Sliver for free. So if I want a Crippling Fear next turn, I will lose my Leeching Sliver, but Masked Vandal and all Changelings are immune to Crippling Fear. And then Heartless Act can kill their first Sliver as well, so... Uh, let's see, how do I want to do this? 
maybe I can even attack first, but then I would lose my Masked Vandal. So that's probably not worth it. So, yeah, let's just play this untapped. Crippling Fear, naming Crab, of course. And then Heartless Acts. And attack for five. And next turn we can follow up with a couple more slivers and get those sweet cascade triggers. If they have an answer for my first sliver, the game gets pretty interesting. A letter of acceptance, so next turn they could maybe replay their commander. Ooh, the haste on Cloud Shredder is tempting. So, tempered sliver into probably Cloud Shredder. The spark, sadly, no targets. If I play Cloud Shredder, there's a decent chance I hit a discard spell. If I hit like a Swords to Plowshares, that would be kind of awkward. At least Lightning Bolt we can still aim upstairs. I guess there is an argument for playing the Steel Form and then keeping the Cloud Shredder until next turn to maybe give our creature surprise flying. Especially if they're holding some sort of interaction here for Cloud Shredder. Could still cascade into a 2-drop, which cascades into a 1-mana discard spell. Nope, Pillar of Origins instead. And our opponent does have the Abrade. Alright, I think that worked out fine. And then next turn we get to Cloud Shredder, fly over. Showdown for card advantage. So we don't need to worry about the first sliver. Alright, so probably start by cycling Triome. And then leave those untapped, that's fine. Ooh, Grave Shifter. Is that better than Cloud Shredder here? It's a close call. Gets back one of my other slivers and it's a 4-drop, so it has a higher chance of cascading into something juicy. 9, 10... I wouldn't necessarily have lethal here anyway, sure. That's Grave Shifter. Ooh, Blur Sliver, there we go for haste. Cascade once again. Cascade once again. And this is the chain reaction that we want to see. And a Lightning Bolt can go upstairs since we cannot pay for Diffusion Sliver. Everything has haste. And we get to return probably the Tempered Sliver. Although Leeching would be fine too. Opponent has to chump. But they've given up. Alright, sweet. Won the mirror match, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Shalai Voice of Plenty deck. So... Not the best opening hand ever. Kind of lacking some early acceleration. Although this could be a hand where we just curve out with Cleaving Sliver and don't even play our commander. Could see that happening. This opponent appears to be quite aggressive. At least my Crossroads comes into play untapped if I wanted to. That's more of a life gain deck it seems. And I'll play Metallic Mimic. Naming Sliver. Next turn I could Herald Swarm. Scute Swarm. Can help them block on the ground. So what color do I name here? 
probably red or blue. Red seems more important. Name Sliver. And I don't think my opponent's trading scoots for him, but we'll see. We can eventually give our team flying or maybe first strike. Alright, if they're gonna mutate onto Skeet Swarm, we could be in a bit of trouble. So now, if they eventually get to six lands, they'll get copies of a 3 4 as opposed to a 1 1. Cold Steel Heart, I still wanna play here. And then probably play the Enduring Sliver. Shalai shows up. I'll take it. And the lands lets me cast the first sliver. So we got there after all. Leeching sliver. Not the best hits, but... At least gives me a bit more board presence. And we'll pass it back. Ornithopter is an interesting one. Charging Badger. I guess her opponent just wants cheap creatures to eventually pump with Shalai's ability. Luckily, opponent's stuck on four lanes, so we don't need to worry too much about the Skewed Swarm. And I could double block the Great Horn, which I'm probably forced to, so I don't fall too far behind in life. Uh, heroic intervention, so opponent gets to save their creature, that's fine. Reveal our two drop and a chromatic lantern as well. So I can cast quite a few creatures here. Starting with cleaving sliver. And what did we hit? Is it Duress? I guess we couldn't cast Duress because shall I give some Hexproof, so that makes sense. Next, probably play Imposter and then Dragscape as well. Could hope to hit Source to Plowshares to Exile Shalai. Lightning Bolt is a little awkward. I guess we still Bolt Shalai. Alright, there's the swords. So that deals with Shalai at least. So if we had the difference ordering there, we could have maybe killed an additional creature. And then probably attack with uh, Leeching Sliver here. If I trade for the two 1 1s, am I happy? Yeah, sure. Keep first sliver to block the Great Horn. Opponents can level a Paladin class as well. So that does represent quite a bit of damage. So probably trading the Metallic Mimic. This Trample, so better to block the 1-1 one -one token. So we're at three. Could be in danger of dying. Heartless Act, not a bad draw. So what's the move here? How much damage do I have in play? Let's say I kill the token, attack with everyone, get five triggers. So opponent's at 30. And yeah, looks like I have just enough here. So I don't want to let the opponent gain any more life. Uh, 
Alright, sweet, Exaxes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Facing a Zimon blue green deck. And we've got a few two mana ramp artifacts to help us out. Haunting Voyage in case opponents has a sweeper, although that's unlikely in blue green. So for now, Cold Steel Heart on black. Seems fine. And next turn we can Ornithopter, maybe keep up swords. So Zimon early on can put extra lands in play and later can draw cards. Opponent opting for Into the North instead. Ooh, Faber Elder seems better than Ornithopter even though it doesn't give me blue mana here which I will need to cast the first sliver. Can always get lucky. And then we'll play Ornithopter next turn. Oracle of Moldaya, certainly worth killing. So, how about Ornithopter? Then I can Swords attack and foretell. Go full control real quick. In case they wanted to trade. Alright. And then next turn we should be able to cast our first sliver. Which will also let us attack with the Faber Elder as a 5-5. Since I don't need to tap it. Alright, so... This seems fine. Steel form sliver. And smash. And then I could play Mast Vandal. Just to potentially find a one mana discard spell, or I could wait until they play creature in case I cascade into a removal spell. We do have a lightning bolt left. So I'm more likely to find a discard spell, I think. Yeah, I guess I'll play the Masked Vandal. And hit a Duress. Which can take away an Hour of Promise. Luckily there's no Field of the Dead to worry about anymore. And pass it back. Our hand's not too exciting, but there's still a Haunting Voyage we can eventually cast as our opponent keeps ramping. So they could refuel with a large Gadwig drawing them cards. We'll see if that's enough. For now, there's nothing for me to get back. But we've got a pretty fast clock. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing off against a Toxtrill deck. And our hand's a little bit on the slow side, no ramp. The mana's not bad, and we do have a Mirari's Wake, which is important for potentially replaying the first sliver. So, maybe it's still okay. The Spark, of course, can answer Toxtrill as well. And then we're hoping to draw some early acceleration. Ominous Seas. And a Paradise Ritz, perfect. So we can still maybe cast a turn for the first Sliver. Followed by Mirari's Wake. Blind Beetle has protection from green. Mana Wift Sliver. Another great pickup here. 
So, yeah, we'll just play Mana Weft. Time for Stomping Ground. Or I could maybe keep up a D Spark here, which might be worth it. On the off chance that uh, our opponent plays a 4 drop we want to exile. Alright, opponent's is gonna keep up 4 mana. So there is the risk of a counter spell. I think I would rather have them counter the first sliver, still get the cascade value, as opposed to them countering Mirari's Wake, which makes it easier to replay our commander. So I'm still gonna go for it. And then keep Paradise Road untapped, sure. Right, hit a Lava Belly Sliver. So we get to deal a little bit of damage. And they didn't counter, but they might have removal. A sweeper could also be painful, especially if we don't draw land. Underworld Dreams instead, that's fine. Alright, so looks like I get to do my thing. And probably want to play Mirari's Wake before casting any additional slivers. And then I want to tap my creatures for mana before my lands, since those produce double mana. Do I want to tap the first sliver? It does get blocked by Blind Beetle, so probably. This seems fine. Go with Spiteful. Hits Diffusion. Which can hit a 1-drop. And a Thought Seize is pretty good here. Check for any Sweepers. So, some expensive cards, Dirge Bat, not that threatening, to be honest. Since we've got a Diffusion Sliver, which I think also covers abilities. Yeah. So, probably take the Lockmere Serpent then. Probably could have tapped my mana better to still cast Imposter here since we actually had enough white. But I guess I'll take it. The rest is gonna miss. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, so quite the blowout here. Cloud Shredder giving the team flying in haste. Especially if I also played the Imposter, would have been a lot of damage coming in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Kenrith, the Returned King, so the five-color matchup. Our hand is good, not great. Could use an extra land or two, but I'll try it. Definitely relying a lot on Chromatic Lantern to do some fixing. And then hopefully we can find another land along the way. Sentinel, a good target for Lightning Bolts. I'll just do it now. Alright, no land sadly. Let's play the Glade Walker then. Cultivate's a good one. So we could already see Kenrith next turn, as we're struggling to deploy our hand. Alright, there we go, so we still have a chance. So land of the top can give us the first sliver. Alright, looks like we'll have to wait an extra turn, but we get to play around a counter spell too for what it's worth. Alright, opponent had the counter. 
Maybe I wanted to switch the sequencing up. Since resolving Cold Seal Heart was more important than Rally. And probably one attack since I don't expect Elder to stay at 2-2. Two -two. Opponent untaps with a lot of mana. Wandering Archaic. I guess I don't care about too much. Not casting many instants and sorceries. Alright, looks like we have to wait a little bit longer. For now, probably play Pretender. Naming Sliver. Reformation. Okay. Opponent can cycle away their land. And has their own lantern. So they've got a lot of mana, they're setting up for this Kenrith, and yeah, still waiting on my first sliver. So now, let's see, I could double two drop, or I could play Tempered Sliver, grow the Pretender, offer the trade for Archaic. And if they take it, then I get to attack past it and pick up another counter. Or I could play Faceless Agent and uh, then still offer the trade. Kind of want to keep the three drops to play after we play the first sliver, so I think I'm going to double two drop here. And hit for five. Let's get an extra damage. Time for Kenrith, which will dominate the game if he goes unanswered for a while. Blur Sliver for Hastes. I guess we're gearing up for next turn. Or I can take a slightly different approach. So our opponent can distribute how many plus one counters here? Looks like three. So they could grow Kenrith up to an 8-8. Eight eight. So I'm not going to attack past it. So I guess I'll just play my Blur Sliver set up for next turn. Pact of Negation to counter that. Okay. I guess it works for me. Kenrith gonna draw a card instead and can still place a counter somewhere. Or cycle Sacred Foundry. So they've gotta pay for pacts. Kenrith can put a counter on Incubation Druid, so it's taps for three. Alright, at long last. There we go. And hopefully next turn we can do some sweet stuff. Could attack with a Pretender, I suppose. They can still add a counter somewhere, but they're either losing Kenrith or the Faber Elder, which is quite scary here. I guess Incubation Druid can make mana right away, that's cool. Although now I can loot with my first sliver if I wanted to. I 
guess I should loot before I lose haste until end of turn. Although the first sliver probably wants to hang back and loot away tempered sliver. The spark is excellent. And I think I hang on to Faceless Agent as a good creature to get more Cascade value from. So we've got an answer to Kenrith, although I guess we'll have to pay the Archaic tax as well. Opponent keeps cycling. But they've got a lot of mana here between Incubation Druid and Faber Elder. So they can easily replay Kenrith, even if I deal with it. Fires of Invention, quite good with Kenrith as well. And a Rex Age can destroy my Chromatic Lantern, maybe? Or the Rally. Goes for Lantern. So now my play might be the spark on Kenrith, attack with the team. Either way, Leeching Sliver should deal quite a bit of damage, so they're going to be forced to gain life with Kenrith. The Fibor Elder is going to be tapped, most likely. So that seems good to me. I guess there's an alternative where I play Faceless Agents and then don't pay the two mana for the Wandering Archaic and then sure they can exile my first sliver but then I also am empty-handed for Bladeback's ability. Not sure if that's relevant enough. So that's exiled and what happens if I attack with everyone? Drain the point for six down to ten. Chump, chump. And they should still die. Alright, so very close game against the Kenrith deck, waiting for land 5 for quite some time, but we eventually got there. So yeah, overall quite happy with how this 5 color sliver deck turned out. Gives you a lot of variety, get to see different slivers in action every game. Cascade means it's not too bad when playing against counter spells, which can otherwise be quite effective. And being able to cascade into those one mana discard spells like Duress and Thoughtseize means you're a little bit more resistant to sweepers than other creatures decks might be. So I definitely recommend it if you've got the cards for it. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.